Hello, I'm Heidi Goody. I'm going to show you how to make some promotional bunting. The sort of thing I'm talking about, for my purposes, is going to go along the edge of a table at a book fair. This is our logo, we're Pigeon Park Press. Our, our corporate colour is, is orange, so the background's going to be orange and I'm going to applique on some pigeons. So I'm going to be using this stuff, this is called Bonderweb. You can find that pretty easily all over the place. You can buy it in packets or you can buy it by the yard. I think there's a yard here. So the way that Bonderweb works, we have a cat helping us. The way that Bonderweb works is you can iron it on to a piece of fabric. Do you know what? <laughs> <laughs> it's got a rough side and it's got a smooth side. You need to draw the design you want to applique onto the smooth side. You'll notice that this pigeon faces a certain way. And in order to get him onto the smooth side, I need to trace around the back of this. Easiest way to do this, if you haven't got a light box, is to use a window. So you'll see, I'm just going to trace around the edge so that I've got a mirror image. So if I put this underneath, smooth side up, I can trace the pigeon onto the bottom. Okay. So I roughly cut round the pigeon. Um, I did a bunch of other ones as well, but here's, here's one. So this is on the bond web, and you remember I said there was a rough side and a shiny side? The rough side goes down onto the fabric. So this is the fabric that's going to be appliqued on top. Make sure the rough side goes down, because that's the side that's going to melt when we iron it. So, I put the iron over the top. This is linen fabric I'm using, it's as cheap as anything and it will do fine for what I want. The great thing about linen fabric is you can get it in an awful lot of colours too. Okay, so that pigeon there is bonded. I'm going to turn the iron off now because I've got all of these pigeons here bonded onto the fabric. What you do now is cut them out. So when you've stuck on your applique pieces to the bonder web, onto your fabric. You need to... My bunting, this is a template I've made. This is about the right size for, for what I want. Obviously you can make yours any size. It's 17 centimetres across the top, 23 centimetres down there. Now that's the finished size. So I'm going to cut out a whole load of this quite alarming orange colour, but I'm going to add some seam allowances as I go. You can do this by eye, or you can chalk around it using Taylor's chalk. But basically, I'm going to add 1.5 centimetres onto every edge there, to allow for the seams I'm going to sew. So here we've got our applique pigeon. You'll see this backing paper will come off and leave a layer of adhesive on the piece. Now it's not st sticky straight away this stuff, it's sticky when you apply the iron so you can spend a moment getting them where you want to. Bearing in mind you've got to get in the same on all of your pennants. Also bearing in mind we've got a seam allowance here so don't put him where he's going to be caught in the seam allowance. That looks about right to me. And you might want to use a pressing cloth, it would be a shame to have come this far and melt some fabric by mistake if your iron's a bit hot. And that's stuck on there. We're not done yet by the way. It's very tempting, very tempting to leave this like this, but Bonderweb isn't meant to be a permanent adhesive. It holds it there while you sew it, so sewing's the next step. So we've ironed on our applique pieces. What we have to do now to make sure that this lasts a nice long time is sew round all of the edges. So I've got the sewing machine set to a very narrow zigzag and obviously the thread that I'm using matches the black. 
in the pigeon. What we're aiming to do is sew all around the edge of the pigeon. We don't want the stitching to be very obvious, but we do want it to hold the pigeon in place so that the edges don't fray or come loose. pigeon. I'm just going to do the comma as a separate set of sewing and then repeat on all the other pennants. So we've done all of the applique, we've got a set of pennants that have got pigeons attached to them and each one for my case has got a blank one because I'm going to sew them together and make pairs. If you didn't want to use this sort of fabric, you, you might use uh, something heavier like calico and just finish the edges and have a single layer, but I'm having a double layer. So what I'm going to do now, I've changed the machine so it's got orange thread to match the fabric, and I've changed back to a straight stitch. I'm just going to sew these triangles together. So if you remember, we had a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. So I'm going to take that seam allowance and I'm just going to sew down the two straight edges. I'm not going to sew the top edge because we're going to turn it through and that's the edge that I'm going to use to attach it to the bunting. So for now we're just going to sew in a point right down to the point, lower the needle, swivel and back up the other side. Needle up. I haven't bothered to use a lock stitch because these edges are going to be fastened down anyway. Now we're going to trim these edges. So I'm going to trim it within half a centimetre of the seam. This will make it neater when we turn it through and press it. And down here at the point I'm going to trim it a little bit closer because that's the bit that will be ugly and bulky if we don't trim it. Okay, back up the other side. Then we can turn it and press it. So I've brought it over to the ironing board. We're going to turn it through. You want to make sure you've got a nice sharp point. So use something like a blunt pencil. Not something that's too sharp that's going to poke through. But just to turn this point through. So then you're going to press it, and I would definitely be using a pressing cloth at this point, even if you don't have a pressing cloth, use a, a tea towel or a hanky or something, because having done all this work, you don't want to melt it on the iron. And that's one of our pennants. Okay, so you've made your pennants, now you need something to join them to. Um, it would absolutely be fine with me if you chose to buy some cotton tape and use that for your pennants. That's, that's certainly an option. But I decided that I would make some uh, coloured tape to, to, to match the colour of the pennants. I wanted the whole thing to be orange. So I'm using one of these, uh, which is normally used for making bias binding. We're, we're not making bias binding, we're just making a straight piece. So we don't have to cut the fabric on the bias, but we'll use the same principle. This one here is, uh, I think it's actually an inch wide, 25 millimetres. So what you do is you cut the fabric into a strip 
or actually I've used three strips and I've seen them together to get the length that I want. I've gone for a length of about three and a half metres. And you cut it twice as wide as this because it's going to curl round, you'll see in a moment. So when you've got your strip, and if you need to join it together, join it together and press out the seams. You're going to feed it through this gizmo. You'll find it easier to do that if you cut a slanted end there, because you're going to put this through. It goes through this end. Make sure that the right side of the fabric is face down. You'll see that the point makes it easier to thread through. A cat has come to help us. Okay. Now as it goes through, like this, the bias binding maker will fold the fabric and the, one, the thing that you want to do is to catch those folds with the iron as they come out. Okay, you'll see that I've made my length of tape and I've also, I've folded it in half, okay? Folded it in half, pressed it again, so now we've got this rather nice strong ribbon. So. You have to decide then where to place your pennant on this. The first thing I'm going to do is find the centre, because that's where the first pennant is going. I've got nine pennants, an odd number, so one of them is going in the middle. Marking that with a pin. Okay. So having done that, I'm going to get one of my pennants. What I'm going to do with all of my pennants is trim the top, because the top is not necessarily going to have turned out beautifully even, so you want to make sure you end up with nice even edges that are going to go in there. And then in this place here, where I've put the pin, the centre of the pennant goes in the centre of the pin. I'm going to put that in place and secure it with a couple of pins. Because when I've finished assembling this, I'm just going to sew along the top and, and sew all the pennants into place. You'll see now why I, I wanted inch wide tape, because it's folded over, it's half an inch. That's actually a good size for securing the pennants. Now I said, I'm going to space these out from the centre. So I said I wanted them one pennant's width apart, so I measure it. Trimming them first, trim the pennants. I'm measuring one pennant's width and I'm going to place the next one. And I'm going to pin that into place as well. And I'm going to keep going one pennant's width apart in both directions from the centre, both directions from the centre, until all my pennants are pinned onto this. When I've done that, I can hold it up, make sure I'm happy with the arrangement, and then I'm going to sew it all down. So, I've blue tacked it to the wall so you can see the finished thing. You'll see that I've stuck on some googly eyes I couldn't resist. I should have said that Bondaweb lets you layer things, so I could have made some Bondaweb whites and then blacks. To, to, to make the eyes and layered them up that way and stitched over the whole lot, but no, I thought googly eyes were better. Anyway, this is it. When we go to the book fair, this will actually be around the edge of the table. That's my vision. But this can be used in loads of places, and I'm sure you've got thoughts on how you'll use yours.